welcome, Marsha. Um, Okay, sorry. So we, we we're going to go ahead and get started. So this is Marcia. Marcia's going to talk to you about uh, Families Promise, um, open format. This, this is uh, there's over 100 members, but this is the small group that comes here to, to ask questions and kind of find out a little bit more about uh, what you have in mind for the grant. So please. Thank you, Matt. Um, I want to tell you about Family Promise. It's um, I've been with the organization for four years. Uh, we're part of a national organization that started in New Jersey about 25 years ago by a lady by the name of Karen Olson. And we are now, we now have 187 affiliates across the country, uh, mostly on the East Coast. And uh, Sacramento Family Promise has been in the area for just about eight and a half years. I've been with this organization, like I said, for four. And what we do is we work with 32 different congregations in the Sacramento County area that help us work with families uh, that are homeless and making sure that we get our children in school, they're properly vaccinated, um, and we get them out of the cold. On an average, each month I get about 120, between 100 and 120 calls from families that need assistance. I'm a small, small agency, and you're welcome to come see our day center, which is 73, uh, that has helped 143, as of today, families in the last uh, eight years to become self-sufficient uh, and also be in homes of their own with their children and be off any government assistance. And I think that is the key to a shelter-type setting, not most agencies will let the family stay out uh, 30 days. We uh, have our family stay up to 90 days. And uh, depending on the cases, we will have them stay longer. The housing is just around the corner. We have no family that leaves without getting into housing. Uh, when they get into housing, they are, when it's time for them to graduate our program, uh, they also have jobs. Uh, I know in our grant we said a one in five and one in three. Actually, uh, it, since the grant was written, we have uh, really upped that number at three out of five. And to get employment for three out of five is wonderful. But all of the families, again, like I said, are off all government assistance, except maybe food stamps until they're really on their feet. Um, while they're at our day center, and you'll see a picture of that on the very front of the newsletter. We just moved into that facility in July. It is near the Loza Fishes campus. And uh, we're just thrilled to have it. We're looking at 3,000 square feet and we came from 1,200. So it makes it much easier because you know when you've got 14 people or four families, they can get on each other's nerves. So we're thrilled to have the larger facility. Uh, at the day center, they have a place to shower. They have a little kitchen where they can cook up their special snacks. Um, while they're there, we work with them. We have a part-time case manager and myself. We're the only two staff. And we work with them to see, and I call it, what monkeys are on their back. We've all had those sometimes in our lives. And we make a list of all those things that need to get them back to where they're starting over fresh. And uh, on a weekly basis, we meet with them while they're with us. Whatever income uh, they have, they are required to pay 70% of it after all of their expenses, whatever expenses they might have. Something like maybe a cell phone minute or storage to store their furniture or personal belongings, basic things like that. And if they come in to us and they're paying for a gym membership or something along that line, which has happened, we talk with them and say, no, you know, let's do a budget here. If you're homeless, we, we don't need you to have a gym membership. So we kind of reconstruct their thinking, I think, and keeping them structured, getting up at a certain time in the morning, going to bed at a certain time at night, having to make a checklist where they accomplish something every day. Uh, it's amazing. I know in my generation, we were all geared to do, you know, we had our plan for our lives. To 
so many young people in today's time that doesn't, they haven't been given the structure, they haven't been talked to about finances and how to budget themselves and how to live within their own means. So that's what we work with them, just general life skills. Uh, if they need some empowerment, we send them for women's empowerment. If the men need men's empowerment, we send them there. We work with them on job uh, searches. And like I said, uh, when our families graduate our program, one or both parents, if there's two in the family, um, have employment, so they're they're on their on the right track. Um, we work really closely with our national affiliate for board trainings and training uh, for mentoring. Uh, we once our families graduate, they don't just leave and fall off the face of the earth. I still talk to the very first family that graduated our program, and we keep in contact with them about every three months after the first year to see where they're lacking, if there's an area, maybe they're having problems with their children, or they need some parenting classes for uh, the preteen age, whatever the case is. We work with them and we connect them with a mentor to make sure that they uh, stay on the right track. So we're like an extended family. And what I've seen in the four years I've been with the agency is most of our families do not have family support. And so we become that, that support, that extended support, their family. I feel like a mother of a lot of people, let me tell you. Uh, we, I said we work with 32 congregations in the area. They provide uh, the housing for our families at night and take classrooms and for a week at a time, turn it into just that family room. Have their name on the door and, you know, no, they can put their things in there and it's not bothered. And so I work with, you know, the 32 congregations to do that. They also provide uh, dinner, a hot dinner for them, and some type of entertainment, whether it be a movie night or one of the local clowns in the church comes in and makes balloon figures or, or whatever. Um, so we have activities for them in the evening, and of course we respect their quiet time also, because sometimes if they've worked all the day, you don't want to be entertained, you just want to go to your room. So we uh, encourage that as well. Um, they, the congregations also provide them with uh, breakfast every morning at 6 a.m., because that's when they have to get up, and they're back at our day center by 7. And um, they're getting, they leave our day center in the afternoon at 5 o'clock, and we have a transportation bus that takes them to the congregation. And um, just this year, I think it's been the year that we've accomplished the most. We've moved into the new facility, uh, which we could actually accommodate eight families if we had a, a, a little bit more, at least 20 more hours of a case manager, because it's kind of hard to do is it on a 20-hour basis, isn't it? Um, so our goal at the end, here in the next few years, hopefully, to go to eight families um, at all times. And it would be very easy to do. And I, I have to tell you, I get that 100 to 120 calls a month. And out of that, not all of the families qualify to get into the program. If they have no income and haven't worked for three or four years, um, or they have a family of eight or nine, it's hard to get them into housing with no income, with, you know, six or above children. We, I don't just shut the door on them. I work with them to give them other referrals, and I do a follow-up on them to make sure that they're getting some type of support from some other agency. Uh, it would be great if we could accommodate everyone, but we can't. We actually raise families if they have a car that they can get back and forth to work and they just need temporary help. We can get them in usually fairly quickly. Um, we uh, also raise them on if they have income that they can learn to save. And I must say, most of our families say this is the first time I've ever saved a dime in my life. And if there is an emergency, they can come, and they have spending money, probably more than they've ever 
really had, and they would have to justify it to us. And, and we have their money in a safe for them, and they can come and get money out, but it has to be for a good reason, because we are definitely, number one goal is save your money, pay your rent, and your utilities, get your food. I mean, that's how I was brought up as a kid, and thank goodness I was brought up that way, because I never found myself in a bad situation. Um, I also, uh, we have a uh, fund that pays for GEDs, so while they're in our program, anyone that has not received their GED, we uh, have them go through the classes and we pay for their uh, uh, testing, and so that makes them much more employable. We work with a lot of different corporations in the area that can hire them, uh, anywhere from landscaping to Right now, um, my case manager uh, came through about a year and a half ago as homeless, and she had a bachelor's degree but in sociology and could not find employment. And so she was just a paycheck away from losing it. They cut her hours, and there she found herself homeless. And she just graduated at UC Davis. Well, <coughs> when she came into our program, I thought, there is, how could you? Things have changed for a lot of people. Uh, the lower end jobs, it's easier to get employment. If you have a degree, sometimes it's a little harder in today's time. She is now working for us as our case manager. She's working on her master's degree and doing wonderful job. We've had um, young people that came in and made a mistake by um, getting in with the wrong crowd. One gentleman uh, was one of my first families that came through, um, had four little girls, and his wife had a drug problem, and left them. And there he is with these four little girls, precious little girls. Instead of totally losing it him, him, himself, and look, he had, didn't have his GED, he's gone back to school, got his GED, he just graduated uh, uh, and got his uh, drug and alcohol and family therapy, and he is working at uh, the Sacramento Unified School District as a drug and alcohol counselor. We have many more. I can just go on and on how they just had a little taste of accomplishment in their lives, and their whole lives turned around. So by us staying with them month by month, um, this particular gentleman, he came to me about six months after saying, saved up half of the money I need for this used car. What do you think? Should I finance $2,500? I've never done that. You know? And to us, it may seem so minute, but that was a big thing, and I guess he wanted to ask Mama. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, we sat down, we talked about it, we looked at his budget, and that happens almost on a weekly basis where a past uh, guest of ours what do you think about this? I want to get to this point in my life. And I'm honored to, to work for an organization that truly changes people's lives. And, um, and working with such wonderful congregations that have been with us since day one. Uh, we've had uh, 28 since day one. We're now up to 32. And by January, I'll have 34 congregations that work with me. Um, we're in desperate need. whatever needs to be, my average day is 10 to 12 hours a day. And I live in Placerville, so I, have a, I, I really burned the candle at both ends. So with this case manager, our goal, I know in the official grant, we have hoped to add four. We have added four to our count of graduates already this year. So now we're on that second four, which we talked about in the grant, so I expect to have at least 25 graduates by next year. And for a small little agency as we are, uh, you know, I look and I hear a lot of presentations
taking from the members of the Fed. And so we're taking them and changing their way they have conducted their lives. I know that sounds hard to do in a 90-day period, but we see growth every day. It's a family that's just with me. Um, they've been with me about a month. And I noticed they weren't as in tune to their chores or meeting all their goals on a weekly basis. So I called them in yesterday and spoke to them, and I was very blunt, which was not my normal nature um, because I was the director of a hospice for 23 years before I came up to work with, with a homeless family uh, from Southern California. But I spoke to them, and I said, you know, it's time to put on your boots, pull them up, and move on. Let's just, you can do this. He had never had any direction. He had never had anyone to tell him, you can do this. And that is amazing, positive, positive, positive. And I, I thought, he seemed really angry when he left. Like, you know, I had told him, I said, you've got two little children. You're going to have to get out there and do more than just five searches for jobs or per day. You're going to have to get out and do a, a more. And he goes, and you don't understand. Yeah, I understand. I was 17. I graduated high school at 16. I was 17 and found myself with a, a child. And I had to step up to the plate and take care of that child. And I knew I couldn't do it on a high school education. But I was smart enough and had been given enough guidance that I knew I could go to college. And that's for the grant. <laughs> that's where you work and you pay for it as you go. And I said, you can do it. I said, as a young girl who knew hardly how to boil water, to get out and, you know, take charge of your life, you can do it. Everybody can do it. You just have to pull deep from in yourself and get the strength out. And that's what we try and work with our families. And I think that's why we've been so successful, sharing our own stories. Um, my Sunday person that volunteers is one of our former guests. My bus driver is one of our former guests. And they are showing our current guests that they can actually make a difference and they're changing their lives. And the ones, and not saying that out of all that families that I have, that occasionally we don't have some that just don't make it because they can't abide by the rules. And, uh, you're looking, and in your proposal, you, you're looking to uh, add more time for your case management. Yes. And that's really part of the, the operation here. Mm -hmm. um, how many guests or clients does a paid case manager normally have in a 20 or 40 hour uh, service? In a 20 hour week, she has four uh, that she case manages on a weekly basis. And we're hoping to add more hours where we can bring in an additional four families uh, on a 90-day rotation. Same case manager. Same right. case manager. Yes. Uh, which is very feasible, I, I feel, because uh, we meet with them once a week. Of course, they do stop and ask you a thousand and one questions throughout the week or needing some guidance. While they're at our day center, we bring in uh, a young lady from Bank of America that assist us in teaching them about uh, banking and all that we do as well, but how to reconcile a bank statement, how to not have overdraft fees, you know, how, you know, how to properly do that. It's not taught. And so they're lost. Uh, and it's amazing how some of our past graduates are now wanting to know about investing and things like that. So. Uh, we do parenting classes. Um, we bring someone in from Clean and Sober if they've had a past drug or alcohol. It, it, there's a lot of different things that we do throughout the day to guide them constantly in the right direction. Any other questions? I don't want to run too long. No, you're, you're perfectly fine. I, I think that's great. Thank you very much. Well, we appreciate it, and you're welcome to come by our day center or go by one of our congregations if you ever would like to do that to see how that feeds 
what fits together. Uh, I'll be happy to meet you there any evening or get you any time of our day. So I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.